All right, so Steve, you talk to CEOs all the time across every industry. What are they saying? Well, Brian, CEOs are very pessimistic right now. In the conference board's latest CEO confidence survey, over 90% of them say that the U.S. is going into a recession. And they say this is primarily caused by the actions of the Fed. You know, they're not criticizing the Fed, but they're saying, look, the Fed's goal is to get inflation down to 2%, and they're willing to take some collateral damage, meaning that the GDP will go down and jobs will, grow, will go down as well. So they are very pessimistic. Now, juxtapose that to the consumer confidence, which actually went up last month, which was a surprise after two months of declines. And consumer confidence is a little higher and spending stays up because gas prices have come down for eight consecutive weeks. Even though food prices are up double digit and you've got core inflation going up, you know, the gas price was a great reprieve and they're feeling a little bit better. So you've got these mixed data going on. The fact of the matter is that we are forecasting at the conference board a brief and shallow recession based on the activities of the Fed, both in quantitative tightening and the increase in the discount rate to near 4%, which is what we think is going to happen over the coming year. Okay, yeah. I mean, because the, the debate, Steve, as you know, is, I mean, what's FedEx seeing? I mean, they're a great company, one yeah. of the best-run companies in the world. They see the world. They've got a unique fingerprint, a unique viewpoint, and it's kind of like, whoa, is FedEx, like, doing their own thing? Like, what's in the punch? Well, FedEx, you know, they, they can see uh, the, the pipeline and what's coming over the ocean, what, what's in the shipment pipeline. So, you know, they've got all that down. We are forecasting a U.S. recession. Conference Board is also forecasting a European recession. The Conference Board is also saying that Russia and Ukraine are already in a recession. There, we're not forecasting a recession for some of the major Asian uh, economies, and we're not forecasting that the global GDP in aggregate will decline. But, you know, if you're in China, Brian, and your, your GDP growth rate goes yeah. from, you know, 4 or 5% down to 2%, that's painful. That's a big change. And, you know, it's okay, so it's technically not a recession, but that has material impact. So some of this is just, a, you know, a little bit of lingo. The fact of the matter is GDP is receding and yeah. there is pain coming around the world. Okay, looking at that research report, there is some good news. Feels like there's a lot of bad news lately. I want to have some good news here. U.S. companies are now budgeting for the largest annual salary increases in more than 20 years. That sounds like good news, right? Well, you know, it depends on which side you sit on, right? So the, well, if uh, I'm getting the paid, I'm last happy. Year, so this isn't... Right? <laughs> Exactly. So, so a year ago, the budgets were at 3.6% increase. The actuals came in for 2022 at 4.1. So, you know, another half a percentage point. This 4.3% budgeted growth rate in, in uh, salaries for next year, for 2023, is the highest in over 20 years. Now, part of that is good, but then the question is, is that going to keep up with inflation? So we go back to the previous conversation. What's inflation going to be? And we are forecasting it to be near 6% this year, close to 3% next year before it gets under control in 2024. That sounds good, so Steve. 3% sounds nice. Year. That sounds good. 3% is it like the new 0%. Good. I know, isn't it great? And especially if, if they, in fact, do raise wages by over 4%. But that's also... In, you know, impacted by a, a labor shortage. You've got a low labor participation rate and so forth. The other thing is, you know, typically when you go into a recession, you're looking at, you know, the increase in the discount rate, increase in borrowing rates, all of that, which slows down inflation. But there's usually collateral damage in the labor market. In this case, there are still 11 million job openings. Mm. So that's a lot of open positions, yeah. Brian, that CEOs can eliminate before they start eliminating jobs that are just, filled. That should be a different experience than in the past. I just don't know where the workers are coming from. I don't know where they went. To be honest with you, Steve, I've talked to hundreds of businesses. I had a plumber at my house today, this morning, talk to him. He says, I got, if, I, if I get 80 people to try to start, one may stick around, the other 79 bail. 